Everyone knows that lifting weights builds strength and muscle. That part is pretty obvious, but what are the side effects of lifting long term? Is it really healthy to be doing this for years on end, or will this lead to things like early osteoarthritis, joint wear and tear, and other unwanted injuries? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Nate. I'm a third year doctor at a physical therapy student, so make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay updated on all things pain, injury, and fitness. Lifting weights has exploded in popularity over the last decade. With the rise of influence influencers and social media, lifting has finally become mainstream and is at least something that most people are aware of. But are there downsides to this? Will we start to see more injuries, joint problems, and other health problems if this trend keeps up? Luckily, we actually have tons of research on these questions and some pretty clear answers for us to go off of. So first, let's start with injuries. There's an elephant in the room that nobody really talks about when it comes to lifting injuries. When we lift, we are quite literally decreasing our level of fitness temporarily. Think about it. We're pushing our bodies to the point of needing to adapt and come back stronger. This means that we're inherently accepting a level of risk when we lift weights. So the real question is how big is this level of risk and are we better off not lifting at all? Let's take a look at what the research says. When we look at injury rates, lifting is actually super low risk when compared to other sports and activities. According to recent data, lifting injuries occur roughly seven times less often than soccer injuries. And lifting injuries are less common than injuries in non-contact sports like tennis and badminton. So even when looking at big population samples, lifting is a very safe activity from an injury standpoint. But what about joint and bone health? We've all heard about osteoarthritis and decreased bone density, so how does lifting play a role in this and does it speed these things up? Again, we have lots of data on this, so let's start with OA. For a long time, it was thought that doing repetitive movements like running or lifting would lead to early onset osteoarthritis. Luckily, we now know that it's usually the exact opposite. In fact, having weaker muscles and being more sedentary are huge risk factors for developing osteoarthritis. Lifting is actually a recommended treatment for those who have OA as it's been shown to improve function, symptoms, quality of life, and even slow down the progression. And the same can be said for bone health. Just like our muscles and tendons, our bones like to be stressed with heavy weights. Lifting is really the best possible way to keep your bone density high and reduce the risk of age-related fractures as you get older. We also have research telling us that lifting is great for regulating cardiovascular health, blood pressure, hormone levels, mental health, and a lot more. The science is pretty clear that lifting is not only safe to do, but it's actually one of the single best things that you can do for your health at any age. And to really drive this point home, we also know a lot about the potential risks of not lifting. In fact, the risks of not lifting or not participating in any form of strength training likely outweigh any of the risks that come with strength training. Avoiding all forms of of lifting could lead you more vulnerable to bone fractures, high blood pressure, risk of falls, and a whole bunch of other things that we don't want. Lifting isn't just for strength or aesthetics. It's a tool for living a long and healthy life. So thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all things pain, injury, and fitness, and I'll see you next video.